guess it's fair to say that most Melodian players fall into one of four categories. The first one is those players have always played by ear, learnt tunes from other people, learnt tunes in sessions and from Morris sides, and they keep all those tunes in their head and they can play them. I have the deepest respect for those types of players. I know lots of them and I've met lots of them over the years. The second group comprises players who rely on sheet music, you know, the proper musical notation, and that is actually what I use for my lessons, or have done up to now. Then there's a third group that use some kind of tablature, some diagrammatical representation of the music. And then there's the fourth group, and I think I'm kind of in that group, whereby I use a mixture of all those things. Some tunes I've learnt off my heart, some I've learnt from sheet music, some from tablature. That is a, a gigantic generalisation, and I hope I haven't offended anyone by saying that. So what is the point of this? Well, last year I invented we developed a new form of tablature for the Anglo Concertina. And I did it with the help of my friend Kathy, who's a lady that I teach uh, the Melodian and the Concertina to. My reasons for developing this tablature last year for the Anglo Concertina were really quite selfish because I teach people that play CG and I teach people that play GD. Every time I figured out a new tune and did a video lesson and uh, I provided some sheet music, maybe for someone playing the CG. I had to do it all over again for somebody playing the GD. And it struck me, if I could find a way of just producing one uh, sheet of tablature and one video recording for every tune, for all tunings of the Angler, that would be great. So I came up with this tablature, which is universal for all uh, tunings, CG, GD, B flat, F. And as far as the video lessons go, um, I just record one lesson on the CG instrument and I retune all the uh, concertina parts uh, to whatever instrument I want uh, to teach, teach the piece on. It sounds pretty complicated but it's actually worked very well and I've had a fair amount of success with it since I developed it. So when I was producing this tablature for the Anglo concertina uh, last, I think it was about April or May last year I started doing it, I thought do you know what? I reckon I can do the same for the Melodian. But try as I may, I couldn't come up with anything that I was happy with. And in the end, I just, you know, decided to leave it alone. The other day, my son sent me this recording of a really lovely song. And I thought, oh, this would be great uh, if I produced a Melodian part for it. This song was in E flat, so I needed to use my B flat, E flat, Lilliput. And I thought, oh, do you know, I don't want to write this all out in music. It's going to be a real pain. I could do it in G and pretend I'm playing in E flat. So I decided initially just to scribble the notes down on a piece of paper, just the button numbers. And then that became a bit laborious and I started using uh, a form of tablature. And as the day went by, before I knew it, I had developed uh, a fairly successful tablature for the Melodian. So that's what I'm going to share with you today. Sorry, this is all a bit of a rigmarole, I know, but bear with me. Uh, I think it will be worth it. And at the very least, you can have a new tune you can play at the end of this video and it won't cost you a penny. On the screen there, you can see this tune is called Marianne, not La Marianne, which is another tune that I teach, which is a French piece. So this is a very different sort of song. I play it as a calypso on the Anglo concertina, but on the Melodian, I'm just going to do it as a straightforward um par and it's a very simple tune and I've, I've used this tune uh, for that reason so it doesn't get too complicated. So let's have a look round the tablature, shall we? Up the top is the title. Now you see it says third button start. So this instrument I'm using today is a DG Melodian, which is third button start. So that means that the third button down on the G row on the push is G and on the D row it's D. So it's not an Anna Hatter layout, hasn't got a low G major scale, nothing weird. It's got the accidentals uh, at the chin end. It's a very straightforward, normal layout. And I can tell you now that this tablature can be changed very easily uh, for somebody who has a fourth button start, Anna Hatter layout. And this tablature can also be uh, changed very easily for people with a CF or a B flat, E flat or an AD or a GC, you know, anything that's got those rows that are the same interval apart as this one is, G major and D major. If you're watching this and you've bought one of my tablature based tutorials for the Anglo Concertina, you're gonna have a bit of a head start, but be warned, it is a little bit different, okay? So over here on the left, we've got the first column, which is showing the bar, so this is bar number one. 
So this whole area that you can see here is the first bar of the tune. This red writing here and the red arrows, this is annotations I've put. You won't see this on the tablature uh, normally. I've just put this on for the purposes of this video. Next column says count. So you're reading down. On my tablature you read down the page, not along the page as you do with a normal tablatures. And you can see the counting is one and two, three and four. So straight away you know you're in four, four, four bits of the bar. One and two, three and four. The next column says left hand. And you can see capital letter G, lowercase g, all the way through. And you can look at the red writing here. This is the G bass note on the push, and this is a G chord on the push. So pretty obviously you're doing your standard umpa four times. And that's this column here dealt with. So it's the same as my sheet music where I don't put the, the bass, and I don't think anyone does in music, I just do it in symbols. So the capital G is the bass note and the lowercase g is the chord, and that's buttons four and three on the push on the outside row. So that's pretty straightforward. Now the next column says RH right hand position, and it says pause minus one. Now if you've bought Melodian lessons from me in the past, you'll know what this means. If you haven't, you won't. Just to explain this, if I put my first finger down on the G note, which on this instrument is button three, on the G row, on the push. If I put my first finger there and my fingers two, three and four sequentially underneath, that's what I call the home position, where the first finger is on that home note, the G. So that is what I call pos H for short, position home. Now, if I come up one towards the ceiling, bring all fingers up one button, I call that pos minus one. So if I was to go the other way, that would be pos plus one. This is pos minus one, where my first finger is positioned on button two, my second finger is on button three, third finger is on button four, and my little finger is on button five. <laughs> And so that is what I call pos minus one, and that's the right hand position that you're going to start the tune in. The next column here, it says G row, and it says main. So everything in this column is going to be played on the G row. Remember, you're reading down towards the floor. And it says main because this tune is in the key of G major. So the main row is going to be the G row, and that's where you're going to find the bulk of your notes in this tune. Now there's an arrow pointing to this first uh, number two and a smaller number one. Now this means G row, well, we know it's G row, button two, so the larger number is the button, finger one, so the smaller number is the finger, and it's push. Now I'll tell you now, if I want you to do a pull note, I put a minus sign. That's not unique to me. Uh, lots of people do that on their tablatures. But as it says two with no minus sign, you know you're on the push. So we know it's finger one because of the position. And I suppose you could say, why did I bother putting these numbers in if I've said it's pos minus one? Well, it's just to reinforce that. So your first note is G row, button two, finger one, push. Like that. And it's going to last for this count of one. It's only a quaver because you can see on the end count of one, you've got your next note. Okay, so we're making some progress. And if you look down this column, the next note is uh, button number four, finger number three on the push, like that. And then the next note is the same. Now you notice I haven't put a finger by this because obviously this is finger three and I don't want to put any unnecessary numbers in. So you know this is still number three. And then you've got button two, button four, button four. Again, I haven't bothered to put the fingers in there because they're all the same as the first two. So you try not to clutter things too much. Now, if you've had my tablature for the Anglo Concertina, it's very different, isn't it? Because on that sort of tablature, I show all the buttons of the instrument and the big numbers are the fingers. But on this, I don't show you all the buttons. The big numbers are those buttons and the fingers are the smaller numbers. 
And that's where I was going wrong last year when I was trying to sort out a tablature for the Melodeon. I was trying to show all the buttons. I've been experimenting with this for a few days and I'm finding this really easy to use. And of course, I'm very interested to know what you think. So um, politely, <laughs> do let me know in the comments. Let's talk about timing. Okay, over on the left here, one and two, three and four. So we've got quaver, quaver, crotchet, quaver, quaver, crotchet. Okay, but there's some extra help with the timing in the form of these beams here. Now, you know when you have two quavers on sheet music, or you may not know, but I'm telling you, if you have two quavers, they are joined at the top uh, with a thick line there. Obviously, it's on the top of the notes normally, but here it's going to be on the side because we're coming down. So when you see this thick line here against these two cells, you know you're starting with two quavers, and that's borne out by the one end there. So you know you're going to have two quavers here and two quavers here. So the right hand, the way you count it is one and two, three and four. So that would sound like this. One and two, three and four. And you can see that this note here occupies two cells, as does this counting here, and also the same down here. So beats two and four are both crotchets and you have one and three and you've got quavers there. I'm sure you're getting the idea. And over here, the next column is D row. There's nothing in the D row yet. So I've used that bit of uh, space there to put the word verse. This is where the verse starts and some labels some red labels. Obviously you won't see those normally. You're not going to clutter the page up. So that's basically the first bar. Let's put the left hand in. The left hand is going to be non-stop umpa 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 everything on the push put your bellows out to start and away you go and that is bar number one right let's scroll down and look at the next bar now the counting is different isn't it it's one and two and three four don't forget that one two three four cannot move so if you've got notes in between those counts this is when you use the word and right a little bit more complicated I think we'll jump to the G row uh, to the tune so obviously this is the, the treble side of the instrument the G row and the D row and this is over here the left hand that's the bass side so I'm talking about the right hand and you can see it's a button number four finger number three so we're still in the same position which is here and then you're going to go to button number three, the one above, finger number two, but there's a minus sign. It tells you here that this is G row, button three, finger two, pull. And that minus sign is that uh, sign for pull. So that's this note here. So it's button three, finger two, pull. So, so far on this bar, we've had push, pull, button four, button three. And then you go back to uh, button number four, finger number three, pull. Okay, then you come down to the cell below and it's the same button but pushed. You know it's pushed because there's no minus sign. And then the last note in the bar is uh, same as the second one was, button three, finger two, pull. Now the counting, one and two and three, four. And you can see there's a beam across these four cells because it's four quavers so imagine instead of having numbers here, you'd have the actual uh, head of the note you'd have four quavers with a big thick beam across the top of them see so let's just play that right hand one and two and three four now obviously because we're pushing and pulling our bass has got to push and pull with it hasn't it so over on the left hand side we've got g bass we know that the capital letter means bass note so it's g bass button four outside row i use little finger uh, i tend to use one finger per button both rows but i know a lot of people just use uh, uh, fingers one two and three or just one and two it's whatever you want i keep it nice and tidy now it's this one here we're interested in small letter d so it's a d chord minus means pull just like it did in the tune so it's button three it's the same button we used for the g chord 
but pulled out. So, so far we've had G bass on the push, D chord on the pull. One and, you see? Now, you're going to keep pulling and you're going to play D bass on the pull. So you're going to go back to the button you used here in this first cell on the count of one, we're on the count of two now, but we're going to keep pulling to get the D bass. And on the end count after two in this fourth cell, we're going to come to the button above, push in to get the G chord. So in pushes and pulls, we've got push, pull, pull, push, like this. G bass, D chord, D bass, G chord. And that will go with the right hand like this. Obviously it's very slow. The actual speed is something like this. Quite a lot faster. And then on beat three and beat four, you pull all the way through. D bass, D chord, D bass, D chord, button four, button three, fingers four and three for me. And it's all on the pull. Okay, so if I just play the left hand, I put the right hand with it. Obviously this is very large on my screen here. Uh, I've got the printed sheet here and I'm going to let you have this. Obviously you can get this off my website. I'll probably put it on the home page. So I'm going to read bars one and two, play those first two bars. We are in position minus one, uh, in fact, for the first five bars, so we don't change right hand position. So here we go, first two bars. Pretty straightforward. I mean, it's a very easy tune. I picked this one so it wouldn't uh, fry your brain too much. Okay, so let's move down to bar number three. Now, you can see that over here on the far right, for the first time in the tune, we have notes on the D row, on the outside row. So let's have a look at those first. It's button three, finger two, button five, finger four, button five again, button three, button five, button five. So it's all buttons three and five. We know it's all on the push because there are no minus signs. And we use finger two for button three and finger four for button five. So fingers one, two, three, four are set out on buttons two, three, four, five. So it sounds like this. One and two, three and four. Got a beam against these two quavers and these two. One and two, three and four. So if you look at this note here, you can see it's going to last twice as long as this because these two cells are merged and the same thing down here. Just do that again. And over here you can see this is D row, button three, finger two, push. All of this is push. I just made that a bit smaller so we can see uh, the whole bar, all the columns. Now, as far as the left hand is concerned, we've got D bass, D chord, D bass, D chord, D bass, D chord, D bass, D chord, and they are all on the push. Now, on my normal music, musical notation lessons, uh, I put asterisks by the Ds if they're on the push. But because I'm using this minus sign for the pull, I'm not bothering to put anything on these Ds. So in other words, you're going to know that it's the Ds on the push at the chin end. It's button number two for the D bass and button number one for the D chord. And I use fingers two and one and it's all push. And if you were going to count that, you would count it one and two and three and four. And but I've gone for the overall counting of the right hand side which is one and two, three and four. So we can put that together, pull the bellows out. So that's bar three, I'm sure you're getting the idea by now. Let's scroll down to bar number four. And this is a mixture isn't it of G row and D row. That's going to be Button three, G row, pull. Button four, G row, pull. Button five, D row, pull. Button three, G row, pull. And down here, we've got button three, G row, push. So 
it's nearly all on the pull except for the last note. And it's finger two, finger three, finger four, finger two, and obviously finger two again. I haven't bothered to put number two by that because it's the same button. It's obviously going to be still finger two. There's a little annotation here just to remind you that this is D row, button five, finger four, pull. So bar four, right hand side, sounds like this. And you can see that this note here is in four merged cells. So it's taking up all of beat three, all of beat four. Now the left hand, you start with pull D bass, pull D chord, pull D bass, pull D chord, and then on the same buttons you push in to get G bass, G chord, G bass, G chord. So your left hand sounds like this. Put all that together. Here we go, first four bars. Make sure you've got the right position. Finger one, button two, and away you go. It's very neat and tidy and very easy to follow, and I'm just reading that off the sheet here. And it's pretty obvious that you could adapt this if you had a fourth button start instrument. And I've, I've done actually the tablature for a fourth button start version. And so I hold this up to the camera. Um, you can see that all the numbers on the G row and the D row, they are one higher than they are for the one I'm showing you on the screen here. So it's very simple to do. It took me about five minutes last night to alter my fourth button start version of this to a third button start. And of course, if this was a CF instrument, I just relabel these rows, F row and C row. It works really well, I think. I'm, I'm pretty pleased with this, but obviously, you know, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. If I don't get a very good response um, from this, then obviously I probably won't pursue it. So I'm, I am interested to hear what you say. I know a lot of people will look at it and think, oh, no, no, you know, they'll freak out because they, they're used to reading music. But just, you know, bear with it, have a go at it and you know see if you can make it work um, i'm not saying that i'm going to abandon doing my uh, music sheets for the melodeon i probably won't but i thought i might do a, a mixture bar five here i put a little one in the bracket here because bar five and bar one are the same so we can just rattle that off for you now in bar six under the rh position header this column here it says down one pos h now you may recall we started in pos minus one so we were on buttons two three four five and of course if you had a fourth button start you'd be on button three four five six but we're dealing with a third button start here so you're going to move down one down towards the floor into pos h position home i mentioned that earlier fingers one two three four are on buttons three four five six and there is a reason for this you won't see it in this bar but you will in a subsequent bar so on the g row button five is now finger three you can play it push push pull push like this and then on beat three over here you've got uh, button four on the pull finger two which is held for beats three and four One and two and three, four. And the four quavers at the beginning of the bar have this nice beam against the side of them, just to remind you, although you can look over it, of course, at the counting. All right, now the left hand looks pretty complicated, but not really too bad. You've got G bass, G chord on the push, D bass on the pull, G chord on the push, and then you've got C bass, C chord, C bass, C chord, all on the pull minus means pull so let's do the first half g bass g chord d bass g chord and then c bass c chord c bass c chord it's buttons four and three on the inside row all on the pull so the left hand for this bar just the left hand put it with the right hand And that is the end of the first page. I think I'll play that first page through for you. So these are the first six bars of the tune. We're starting in pos minus one. So this 
is bar number seven. Over on the right hand side, all the notes are on the G row, and you can see you've got this thick black line right the way down on the side of all the cells. That should tell you that it's all quavers, and you've got this big beam along the side here, uh, eight quavers, and you can see on the counting that bears it out one and two and three and four and so all on the G row. Sure, you're getting the idea, so I'm not going to take too much time over this. Button five, pull, button five, pull, button six, push, button five, pull, button five, push, and then push again, button four, push, and then pull. And you use finger three on button five, finger four on button six, finger two on button four. Don't forget you're in that position home. So this bar is going to sound like this. one and two and three and four and so all on the G row okay the left hand here you've got C bass C chord C bass C chord notice though that the C bass on beat two doesn't have a minus sign because it's on the push this note on the right hand side is push you see so you're going to play C bass C chord pull C bass push C chord pull like this don't hear any difference obviously because you've got C bass and C chord on the push and the pull here but you'll need to push this C bass here that I've got highlighted here rather than pull it and then on the second half of the bow you've got G bass G chord G bass D chord on the pull so the final chord is pulled it's the same button as the G chord but obviously pulled rather than pushed. So your left hand sounds like this and looks like this. Let's play this bar. Let's move on to bar eight. Still on the G row. One and two and three, four. We've had this timing quite a lot, haven't we? Four quavers, see the beam here. Right hand, we are still in that position. We're still in Pos H, and it's all G row, like I say, button five, push, button four, pull, button four, push, button three, pull, button three, push, and it's third finger on button five, and it's second finger on button four, and it's first finger on button three. So that will sound like this. So you can hear it's running down through the scale. The left hand here, bar eight. Now this is quite interesting because we've got D bass push, no minor sign, D chord pull with a minor sign, and the same again. So D bass on the push is button two, outside row, finger two, and D chord pull is the button below that, and that's button number three, finger three, pull. So you have D bass, D chord, D bass, D chord. So it's buttons, two three two three push pull push pull so you're in the middle here if you like of your four buttons and i use finger two finger three finger two finger three and that's as you play the all works very nicely together doesn't it and when you hold on to this last note on the right hand side g row um button three finger one push as you play that note and hold it for two beats, you're going to play G bass, G chord, G bass, G chord. So the whole bar sounds like this. Right, so that is the whole of the verse. So I'm going to look at my hard copy and I'm going to play the whole of page one and two bars of page two. Those eight bars are my verse. I'm going to pull the bellows out a fair way before I start. And here we go. Position minus one to start with. Remember that from bar six, we're going to move our fingers down to position home. Here we go. So let's move on into the chorus where things get a little bit more exciting. From now to the end of the tune, you're not going to be using the D row at all, I should tell you, so which is going to help. 
So here we are, bar nine. Now you'll see that it's got a little bit more interesting on the G row because you've got two big numbers. That means two buttons are going to be played at the same time. What we're going to do here, we're going to play a tune and a little harmony. So you can see that this first pair of notes here are going to last for the whole of beat one and these two are going to be beat two, beat three, beat four because the cells are merged. So what have we got here? In the red writing it says G row button three finger two played at the same time as G row button four finger three and it's push because there's no minor sign. In the right hand position column you can see it says up one position minus one. So you're coming up one back to where you started the tune you're coming away from position home up into position minus one. So you've got finger two on button three and finger three on button four. Remember the big numbers are the buttons on my Melodian tablature and the small numbers are the fingers. So you've got a pair of notes played together. Now these pair of notes last for the whole of beat one. Now if you look at the pair of notes that we use in beat two or on beat two you can see you've got Button four, again, finger three, so that doesn't change. So you can lift finger two off, leave finger three on, and put the little finger, finger four, on button five, underneath button four. So you've gone from here to here, and the third finger is common to both. So you're going to count that one, two. And then on beat three, you're going to come up the melodion if you like to buttons two and three fingers one and two they're always next door neighbors in this tune that the, the notes when you play them together and then you end on beat four where you started on buttons three and four so let's have a listen to those pairs of notes see the tune is it's the button on the right of the two and the buttons on the left are a lower harmony. Very often when we have a harmony it's above the tune, here it's below. Because on the melodeon you can't get different volumes from the buttons, can you? So, you know, it's the one on top higher pitch that's going to sound uh, out more than the lower one. That's why we tend to do the harmonies underneath. And the left hand couldn't be much easier, could it? G bass, G chords four times. So let's put that together. Here we go. So remember you're in position minus one, fingers two and three, button three and four. So here we go. So one, two, three, four, and the bass is really going one and two and three and four and isn't it? And don't forget, tablature, music, it's all there just to give you a guide. You know, put your own interpretation, put your own spin on it and your own expression. Right, let's scroll down to bar number 10. A little bit more complicated in terms of pushing and pulling, but much less notes. Right, now at the end of bar nine, you had uh, buttons three and four, push, fingers two and three, and you're starting with the same pair of notes. So I haven't put the fingering in there. I don't want to clutter things. So it's buttons three and four, push, fingers two and three. And then you're going to do this. Now, you're going to go to buttons two and three, and they're both pull, hence the minor signs, fingers one and two, so like this. Finger three is common to this pair of notes and to this pair of notes. So you can leave finger two on and you lift finger one and you tuck finger three underneath on button four. So you've got both those pairs of notes are on the pull. So it's push, pull, pull. Over here it tells you that this is G row, button two, finger one, played at the same time as G row, button three, finger two, pull, and the minus sign is the pull. And this pair of notes here lasts for the whole of beats two, three, and four, so it's held for quite a long while. The bass line, G bass, and then it's D chord on the pull, and then D bass, D chord on the pull for the rest of the bar. I'm sure it's all falling into place in your head now. Excuse me if I'm dumbing this right down, but I'm just trying to make it easy for absolute beginners to understand as well as you people that have been playing a long while. So this is bar 10. I'm going to use my hard copy. I'm going to play the first two bars of the chorus, bars 9 and 10. Let's scroll down to bar 11. Same idea right to the end. This is going to be all on the G row. Left hand couldn't be any easier, D bass D chord four times, 
and the timing of the right hand we're going to count one two and three four so we can see two quavers here so one two and there's those two quavers it's borne out by the counting over here now we ended the previous bar on buttons three and four you're going to come up to buttons two and three pull see the minus signs there fingers one and two hold that for the whole of beat one and then on two and you're going to leave finger three where it is lose the first finger put the third finger underneath on button four here and you're going to do two of those in a row for your two quavers two and so you've got one two and and then you're going to do a single note here because uh, there isn't a harmony note here on a standard layout instrument there is if you've got the Anahata layout you can play uh, the button above that but we won't get into that here we're just going to do this single note still in the same position okay it's finger one button two pull G row so it's just a single note there and then leave your finger on that button add button three to it still pulling so you start and finish in the same place and like I said the left hand's all D bass D chord on the pull buttons four and three so bar eleven that pretty straightforward bar 12 and you ended bar 11 here buttons 2 and 3 pull you're going to start on the same buttons in bar 12 still pulling and then you're going to push straight away and then you're going to move down to buttons 3 and 4 so in bar 12 your tune is going to sound like this And that pair of notes there, the last pair, held all the way through beats two, three, and four. And again, here you're going to do the D bass, and then it's all G uh, chords and G basses to the end of the bar. Okay, so I'm not going into vast detail now because I'm sure you're understanding it. I hope you are. Right, let's play the first four bars of the chorus bars 9, 10, 11, and 12. So refer to your printed copy. Now it's fair to say that you probably will get a fair old armful of bellows there because there's an awful lot on the pull, isn't there, from uh, the the and count of one in bar ten to the uh, the count of one in bar twelve. An awful lot of pulling there. Now we go to page three now, and bar thirteen, very similar to bar nine. But this time we do this. So on beat one, rather than playing these two notes once and holding them for the whole of beat one we do two of them as quavers you can see the beam but the rest of the bar is the same as bar nine so you count it one and two three four so remember we're still in pos minus one from when we changed to that at the beginning of the chorus let's have a listen to bar 13 now bar 14 as you can see it's got a 10 in brackets underneath it so it's exactly the same as bar 10 so I'll just rattle that one off bar 15 it's similar to 11 but not quite the same the counting is 1 and 2 and 3 4 the bases are all uh, D bass D chord on the pull buttons 4 and 3 when you played bar 11 you played this pair of notes and you held it for a whole beat this time you're going to do two quavers so you end up with four quavers to start with and you've got this beam just to remind you of that. So it's one and two and three, four. Single note on the count of three here. All on the pull. Pretty straightforward, I think. And the last bar of the tune, last bar of the uh, chorus, bar 16. It's similar to bar 12, but the last pair of notes are different. You've got button two, button three pulled. Uh, you've ended the previous bar see with those notes so it's the same buttons so buttons two and three pull and then pushed and then pushed again so it sounds like this and the left hand you're going to play a D bass on beat one a G chord on the end count of one and then a G bass and a G chord and on beat three you're going to play G bass and G chord together as you play uh, the final part of the bar so I'll show you how that works one and two 
and on beat four you'll probably do a little eruption there like i say this doesn't show you absolutely everything what musical notation has over and above tablature is of course you can see the landscape of the notes as they rise in pitch and lower in pitch and like i say this is only meant to give you a rough idea of how the thing goes um, but you know it should be enough and if I'm teaching you of course I always provide you with a, a video recording and a tutorial uh, this has been very in-depth because I've wanted to show you uh, how this works let's play the whole of the chorus shall we so bars 9 to 16 So let's play the whole thing, all 16 bars of it. And if you don't like the harmony in the chorus, you just lose the notes on the left, just play the, the upper note. Just play. Hopefully that's all pretty straightforward. Sorry it's been a much longer video than I'd planned, but hopefully you've stayed with me to the end and you found it interesting. Let's play the whole thing through all 16 bars. So there we are, that's the whole thing. So I hope you enjoyed that, I hope you found it interesting. Like I said, do let me know in the comments what you think or get in touch via my website. Uh, thanks for watching and you'll see me in my next video.